guess what? We actually have full specs of the Canon EOS R. Let's eat some waffles. First off, thank you so much for subscribing, the new people that are here. It really means a lot and uh, I really appreciate it. The official specs have been leaked and I am so excited to share them with you on this quick update video on the EOS R. I'm just gonna read the specs here, going down to the first kind of new information, and that is having RAW at 14-bit, uh, dual pixel RAW support. The EVF is an organic EL 0.71 times, so that is a pretty decent magnification. The Panasonic G9 is known for having a crazy magnification on the EVF. I did a review on it and it's insane. It's a 0.83X. Um, we're getting a similar magnification as we would see like on a GH5 or a standard Sony at 0.71. 5,655 autofocus points. Autofocus range EV negative six to 18. I didn't mention this in the previous review because I'm not really a photographer, so I don't deal with uh, those numbers, but basically what it means is we're getting extremely great autofocus in low light. So, <laughs> ah, man, that coffee is good. By the way, have you guys ever been to Waffle House? Let me know in the comment section if you're a waffle head like me. The ISO sensitivity is 100 to 40,000. I don't know if that is going to be well performing at 40,000, but we will just have to wait and see. Shutter speed up to 1 8,000th of a second, which is pretty impressive. Continuous shooting performance up to eight frames per second. At servo AF up to five frames per second. So I just looked at the 5D4 and it is getting seven frames per second. We have Rear liquid crystal 3.15 type 2.1 million dot touch panel. Uh, battery is the LPE6 uh, and it cannot charge over the USB. Eh, kind of sucks because one of the great things about using the Sony camera and Panasonic cameras is that you can plug them into the wall using a USB cable while you're filming to get unlimited power. Unlimited power of the dark side. One of the best things about having these cameras now with the USB that can charge is having those little portable battery bricks that you get for your phone and charging your camera using those bricks. Um, big shame there, uh, kind of dumb. Recording media, SD, SDHC, SDXC, and there is no support for USH2. Uh, the number of pixels of the viewfinder is unknown, but the 7.1 magnification is the same as a 5D Mark IV, so that's good. No AF point spot metering, 4K up to a 480 megabit rate, no mention of bit depth. Interesting. It appears as if the camera will auto crop with EFS lenses to some extent, so that is a very welcome uh, thing to see there. That means that we can use lenses like the beloved uh, Sigma 18 to 35 and not have vignetting going on. Um, I don't know about 4K. I have another article that I will read from EOS HD in a moment about video. No mention of IAF, only face tracking is mentioned. We have 370 shots with 450 with a power saving and compare that to the Sony a7 III. The a7 III gets 710 shots per battery. So that is not looking so good in terms of battery life. A lot of people in the comments on the previous video talked about the little uh, touch strip on the back. It looks like instead of having a joystick, there's some sort of little touch strip. Ken Rumors is saying the strange looking bar on the back of the camera seems to be called the MFN bar and can be programmed for ISO speed, white balance, check focus, display info, movie shooting, flexible priority AE, or user customization. It supports four types of actions, left, right, slide, and press. Yeah. Interesting, it's kind of like a uh, touch bar for the Mac, except on your camera, which I don't think anybody ever wanted or asked for with the MacBook Pro, and nobody's ever asked for a, a touch strip on a camera, but hey, it's uh, it's creative, it's, an, it's interesting. And I'm gonna read an article by Andrew Reed, who has an amazing website that I'm really active in, 
EOSHD.com. Um, I'm giving him full credit here. I am not stealing, I am just sharing. So thank you, Andrew, for this great post. Um, we're talking specifically about the video stuff. He's saying that the 4K codec is H.264, finally dropping the Motion JPEG codec, which is a very welcome addition. 4K and 1080p, you can select between all I and IPB compression, which is amazing. The 6D Mark II wasn't even giving us all I codec, so having that in 4K is fabulous. Frame rates in 4K are at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. In 1080p mode, you can go up to 60p, but only in 720 can you go to 120. It's kind of an assumption that new cameras are gonna have 1080 at 120, but we don't have it here, and that worries me a little bit, but there is an EFS crop mode, which is 1.6 crop close to Super 35. So that means you can put PL adapters on there and use proper cinema glass um, or EFS lenses um, and potentially EFM lenses. I don't know, we'll see. The bit rates are 400 megabits per second in 4K in all I mode, necessary as each frame is stored, stored individually and 120 megabit in IPB mode. The 120 megabit in IPB mode really reminds me of the codec and the bitrate of the M50, which is in 4K mode, but having all I giving us way more bitrate is going to be huge for pros. The usual 29 minute cutoff uh, applies, but the camera does support XFAT for larger than four gigabyte single file sizes. Um, if you're not familiar with what that is, basically in the past, if uh, your files were larger than four gigs, the camera would make a new clip and then it would record until that buffered up and then it'd make another new clip. And it was kind of annoying, especially when you're trying to sync uh, video and audio in post. It's like you have six clips and it's supposed to only be one clip and you have to sync all that. And like with my 1DC, I even had moments where there would be like a little, like half a second that wasn't there, like a black frame and it was awful. Only Ultra HD is offered, not DCI 4K. There is an HDR shooting mode for movies, but this isn't available in 4K, which is curious. It is at 1080p and 720 up to a maximum frame rate of 30p. It doesn't work in 60p or 720p at 120 either. There's a kind of classic Canon move, not giving us everything that we want. Uh, having 4K HDR would be great. Uh, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility in post and better dynamic range. So here's the, here's the big question mark. Um, does this have a crop in 4K like the 5D4, which if you're not aware, when you go to 4K mode, crops in at 1.74X, which is insane. It's like almost unusable. Um, however, at that mode, you could put on like a Sigma 18 to 35 or a Tokina 11 to 16, which are crop lenses and sort of get away with it but the Motion JPEG codec really made it hard to use. Uh, also not having a flip out screen was difficult as well if you're filming yourself a lot. So it didn't really take off as a video camera. Based on some of these specs, it does look like they're using the same sensor from the 5D4, um, which is why we're seeing 120 frames per second at 720p and the uh, 4K modes looking similar. So if that's the case, there may be a crop. We're not getting official like specs on that. The 5D4 does have DCI 4K versus Ultra HD, so that is different there. Rolling shutter could be a problem too. The 5D4 had pretty bad rolling shutter when you shot 4K. And it's, and it's also not known whether or not there is an APS-C mode for 4K versus full frame. But that's really the big kind of question mark is, is this gonna be full frame 4K or is there gonna be a crop? The other disappointment is that there is not five axis image stabilization, something that uh, people who've been shooting on Sony cameras or especially Panasonic cameras have come to love and it's not there. Uh, huge disappointment. Canon obviously, like I wasn't expecting Canon to do that because they don't have a history with it, but it would have been a great place to start with this mirrorless camera. There's no mention of being able to shoot log in camera or any type of video profiles. It'll probably just have the standard profiles like faithful, standard, and uh, neutral. The normal ISO range in 4K is 100 to 12,000. You cannot use ISO 50, but you can expand to some of the higher ISO settings. 
And dual pixel autofocus is available for movie shooting, so that means that we are getting dual pixel at 4K. But again, like, I'm really curious about that crop. Is there gonna be a crop on it? It is confirmed that there is only one SD card slot now, which again is an, a disappointment for some people. I wasn't really expecting it at this price point or this kind of marketing of a camera. And we obviously do have an articulating screen, so that's gonna be great. But overall, I think that um, the specs are slightly disappointing. Uh, we were hoping for Canon to just throw everything at us with the specs. I do think it's still gonna be like really, really popular. I think a lot of YouTubers are still gonna use it because it is uh, such a small camera. It's Canon and even in 1080p mode, you can shoot an all eye, you get a flip out screen. Um, and if the 4K mode doesn't have a crop, that'd be great. But even if it does, you can use lenses like a wide angle from Canon or uh, something like that to get away with it. But not having full frame 4K is a big deal. If you're excited about the Canon EOS R, give me a thumbs up. And if you're not, comment below and let me know exactly the things that you're disappointed about. I know I'm a little disappointed about some of these video features. I will keep you guys updated if I know more specs. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this Waffle Rumors video. See you next time. Enjoy your waffle. What do you